<laughs> hey guys, Mike here. So, woo boy, what a mm, red day today. I mean, it was a blood bath. I told the members this morning on Sunday News Briefing, do not look at your portfolios unless you were short the market because it, it was way worse than I even thought it was going to be. This is the worst drop on the indexes I'm going to show you since like 2020. Worst one day drop. And it was the worst. Oh my God. I mean, just look at this, guys. We're going to go through a bunch of stuff. Look at this right here. Microsoft and Apple, worst one day drop since 2020. You don't see them go down this often. Look at the big boys. Amazon, 7%, which is huge. I mean, these things have huge market caps, right? And this is why the spy and everything went down between 4 and 5%. But you just look. I mean, just nothing but red, except if you were in like Twitter. I think it was the only green thing I saw. And unless you were in the inverse ETFs, of course. But you see big, big drops down here for a lot of these stocks. And you see what's really scary is some new 52-week lows for some big cap stocks right now i know it didn't matter what you were in here didn't matter fintech uh, chinese stocks whatever nothing really mattered i don't know how neo put out a green day there but you know you get in the semiconductors you got nvidia hitting a new 52 week low feta uh, meta which is facebook hit a new 52 week low you see the big boys i mean netflix amazon seven percent google five percent of course we knew art was going to get crushed but look at the indexes Good Lord, for the SPY or the S&P to be down over 4%, that is that is a massive drop, man. That's massive. Right there, QQQ divided by SPY, totally risk off. You know, totally risk off. It got crushed, and the, the bears were just dancing and dancing. If you had puts, you were loving life, and I'll be in full transparency on this one. I played both sides. I was like, because I, I knew it was going to be a big drop or a big run up. So I figured I'm going to lose 100% on one contract, but the other one's going to be worth two, three, four hundred percent And that's what happened. The puts end up uh, paying out. I will kind of kick myself and then really not kick myself because I paper handed the hell out of them. When they, and the, when I saw S&P go down 2.7%, I thought, you know what, in this market, not even going to play around. It's quad witching week or triple witching, whatever you want to call it, where all the options expire Friday. And so I'm not even messing around with it. Let's secure a profit and be done. And then I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, that, that's leaving some on the table. But in this market, be happy with profits. That's what I always say. And so, you know, if you just look right here, I mean, what's going on? This is what's scary about this, guys. This is what's scary. Look at food going up again, but then look what happens. Energy. Look at energy. Energy fell off a cliff. And we were all banking, hey, if energy goes down, obviously CPI has to be dropping like a rock, right? I mean, this is what was killing us before. And no, not the case at all. Look at rents. Look at shelter and stuff. You know, this is the scary part. Look at medical uh, care expenses. All this stuff. Hospitality, transportation. You know, going up again. And if you're getting anything out of this, guys, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And I really do. I never ask anything from anybody, but I really wouldn't like to get to 50,000 subscribers. So if you could share the video, I would certainly appreciate it. And, you know, I wrote some of this stuff down. I mean, core goes, and this is the part, core is the big one. Core is what, you know, the Fed looks at. It goes from 5.9 to 6.3%. Goes up, right? That's less energy, less food, right? We don't even talk about that in this. And that's what we're looking at, food up 13.5 percent year over year which is the biggest since like the 80s rents up 6.7 percent year over year which is actually not even true by the way health care insurance up 24 percent year over year you might be noticing that when you get your paycheck every two weeks there and what i say about rent being a bunch of bull is the fact that 6.7 percent. come on man yeah give me in the comments come on you believe that number Here, here's the problem rent the way they come with the way they get it is through surveys it's not even actual or factual or even checked data, for God's sakes. I mean, think about this. How many companies do you know off the top of your head that actually track rent data? It is a lot. It is a lot of them. Some of these people, it's their business to know what actual rents are. So they would know what rental increases are going for, right? And so why would the government, you got to ask yourself this, why would the Fed and the federal government not partner with one or two of these companies, maybe multiple companies, to get factual actual you know data you can check and verify right and have a number for why would why would they not do that because it might show that it's higher and then that makes core look even worse and inflation look much worse let's think about that yeah that's the only reason it makes no sense why 
They wouldn't do that. Instead, they go by surveys. How do people know? There's no way you know what your rent, your your house can actually rent for unless you're calling around trying to check and see what it can actually rent for. And there's no reason for you to know it unless you plan on renting your house out, which is very unlikely, by the way. And so it, it just makes no sense. So that's a bunch of crap is what that is. And so, you know, again, if you believe that 6.7, please put in the comments what you think about the, the rent increase year over year at 6.7. That's ridiculous. It is double digits. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We all know it, okay? And that's my rant for that one. But, I mean, and this is what's crazy. Like I said, look at that. I mean, that's core. And, like I said, the scary part about this report, which got everybody shook, is when they saw the core go up again, right? And then the CPI didn't hardly come down at all. I mean, that's, that's the price where people are going, woof, okay. Well, that's not good, right? Because, I mean, oil is going to have to drop in the 50s and 60s or something to really make a difference, which is that going to happen? I don't know. But when gas can drop by 40% and this is the best you can get on the report, it's not a good sign, right, at all. And so, you know, that's one thing. The other thing I'll tell you is the labor market is hot and the wages are going to continue to go up. And I'm telling you, and it's going to be, and it's going to have a problem bringing down prices, right? And understand, you know, where I stand on this very quickly. I root for anybody who is not a an athlete, an actor, or some executive making monopoly money. Regular folks, I root for them all the time. Get your money. Apply for that student loan debt relief. Get it. Because I promise you, only a hypocrite's going to go ahead and pound on you because of the fe- if a federal official knocked on their door and said, here's $10,000, we're only getting them at the half of the neighborhood, congratulations, they wouldn't turn in that money. They're not especially as tax-free. They'd be like, oh, thank you. And why? Because we pay a lot of taxes in this country. A lot of taxes. You just don't ever add them all up, right? But add, add all your sales tax, your federal, your state, your FICA, uh, your real estate taxes. Add all that up one time and see what the percentage is when it comes to your income. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. And on top of that, you get to pay 24% more for health insurance now, right? You get to go pay twice as much to put your kid through college as it would have cost 10 years ago. You know, you don't get, you know. So, yeah, that's why I don't uh, come down to anybody. And what I'm saying is, Guess what? You got the railroad unions. There's 12 of them. They're negotiating new contracts right now. Three of them have already secured supposedly 24% uh, wage increases, right? I got a buddy of mine. I don't know what all railroad workers make around the country. He works down here and he said, hey, you ever want to go work for the railroad? I get you on starting at 125K, $125,000. He said, don't do it, of course. And I can't tell you why he said that, but, you know, uh, so take whatever 24% is times that and, you know, that's the extra wages, but those are going to be passed on in freight charges, right? Those companies will have to do that. And so those costs aren't going to go down. Those will get passed on, right? You got the bill that passed out in California. It put a $22 cap on fast food workers. I think the 15 is the minimum wage, whatever it is. And in California, that's nothing. I mean, it's so expensive to live out there. It is insane, you know, but I always wonder, you ever notice on a side note how when, you know, Regular folks, as I like to call us, get increases in wages and stuff like that. It always gets, oh, well, that's going to be passed on the consumer. That's terrible. Right? Oh, my God. But here the executives are making monopoly money now. And what's even worse about the executives that pisses me off more than anything is when they come into a, co- a company, which I've seen this firsthand, run it into the ground. They get to leave with a severance package that, that's millions upon millions of dollars. And the employees who just lost their job get a cardboard box and two weeks severance at best, right? And nobody says a thing. Everybody's like, oh, well, that's good. No problem. Like, that's what amazes me. Nobody comes down on them. You know, nobody comes down on athletes who are making monopoly money, actors. You ever notice things about in this economy, the things we could live without make the monopoly money and things we have to have? Absolutely have to have. Got to have teachers. Got to have police officers, military, right? Some of them barely make ends meet. Like, that's what's so crazy to me about it. But nobody gets upset about that. Nobody gets upset, but they go, oh, my God, over here, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just amazing. Like, we'll tear each other's throats out when, when we get something or when we start to see pay increases, right, and can save more and all this other stuff. But nobody even says, well, wait a minute, why does why does that quarterback deserve $235 million guaranteed? I don't understand. For four years. For four years. You know, why does this executive get a $100 million compensation package? He ran the company in the ground. You know, I mean, it's amazing what we get upset about, right? I was telling somebody about that today. It's just, and of course, it's the media because they turn us on each other. That's what it is. But, you know, and anyway, but, but I'm basically saying is the increase in labor, yes, is not going to help. And it kind of, and 
it handcuffs the Fed, right? On top of what the federal government is doing and the state governments, because they're trying to take liquidity out, but the governments keep putting it back in. And so and the wages keep going up, which puts more liquidity in the markets. And, you know, the one thing everybody's watching like a hawk right now, or two things, is the debt market and the credit market, right? Because as they raise wages, they roll off the balance sheet, if that ever does happen, you know, it's going to have an effect. And that's why they can't raise, they can't do a Paul Volcker moment, honestly, because they tried that crap and, and raised the Fed funds rate above inflation. It, just, it would cripple uh, the debt and credit markets. I mean, it just would, because why? We're a debt ridden, not only nation, debt ridden world, for God's sakes. And so, that's another thing that really does hamstring this. And, of course, you know how I feel about the Fed. I have no mercy on them. They put us in this situation by waiting so long to act and being so inept. And, you know, that's just something. And this is what I was talking about here. Three of the 12 rail unions announced tentative deal with 24% pay raises. This came out two weeks ago. And so, and I'll tell you another thing. I don't know if this is going to be true or not. But right here, U.S. considers China sanctions to try to keep them from attacking Taiwan and, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if it does, it just puts more stress on everything, right? I mean, it's not like China's going to sit back and go, eh, no problem. We'll take it. And eh. because remember, they can hold us over a barrel a lot more than we can hold them over. Okay. And so, and I mean, remember, when you're trying to battle against a country who don't really follow rules, it's kind of tough to win, right? And so, um, you know, that, <laughs> you know, you see them being tight allies of russia now buying oil at discount like crazy which they'd be fools not to but they're like yeah whatever we'll, we'll do whatever we want to do and so that'll be a whole another mess so we'll, we'll get to see you know and uh, how that goes but again we can't just sit back and I maybe mean, better hope they don't invade taiwan but we'll see anyway so that's where we're at markets are a hot mess right now trying to digest all this pretty much guarantees the 75 basis point hike next week you would think for sure right um, and so that's kind of where we're at. I don't, I didn't even look to see what the percentage is. I'm assuming it's like 99% sure that's going to happen. So what that put us up 3.25, I believe I'm not mistaken. And so still nowhere near the inflation rate, right? So that's where we're at. And we'll see if the balance sheet actually starts rolling off tomorrow. will make for a very interesting day to say the least. Let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen tomorrow. Is it going to be red or green? Again, as I always like to say though, you're getting your stocks at a discount. How many times do I keep saying you're going to have plenty of opportunities in this market to pick up the stocks you love or they're on your list and stuff. So that's where we're at. Anyway, have a good one. Appreciate all the support and I'll see you tomorrow.